guys, welcome back to another one of my random wee adventures. I am Aaron of Alaba. Today we're in the Northwest Highlands and we're in a wee place called Inchnadamf. And tonight we're sleeping in the bone caves. like local to the area told me about some stream cave so I just kind of gotta keep my eyes peeled like see if there's any wee crannies or nooks anywhere like, I don't know but aye so yeah thanks for joining me today's kind of just a wee camp trip I guess but Aaron style um, off to the bone caves where the history all we tell while we're up there because it's super fascinating, it's gonna just blow some of your minds, man. You'll be like, what? I'm hoping for a storm. It's fucking raining. Sure is raining. Wet like a dog. So we are on the ascent. We've got the beautiful, the beautiful crags, fantastic wee cliffs and rock formations. Oh, it's soaking. It's exactly what the forecast predicted. For once, for once, man, it's going to be right. Look at that. It's magic. Home sweet home for the night. During the end of the 1800s and the start of the 1900s, Bulk Nanumf Glen was of particular interest to Scottish geologists. You see, they believe that, that this glen was carved by melting glacier ice, which once would have covered this entire region during the last ice age. You see, the geologists stumbled across these, these four caves and upon further investigation, they happened to find some bones, didn't they? You see, these weren't just any bones. These were the bones of brown bear, northern lynx, reindeer, ox, pig, and believe it or not, but they also found polar bear bones remaining in these caves. Not only is that a little bit mysterious because the caves are so, so bloody high on the crags, but it kind of shows that climate change is a natural occurrence. And we should all tell we Greta to shuck up and plant some trees. There were thousands of bones found between these four caves. The glen itself apparently has about 20 caves in place, but these four are the famous ones. 
the cave on the right is known as the Fox's Den. Or a really poor man's hole. Seemed to be kind of a hole in there, but I had a look, you can't really go in there. And over here, we have the three other caves. That there's the bone cave, which you were just in. It's the bone cave. Can't really see. I'll have to turn the infrared on later on. Ravens, ravens. They've been on us all day. Anyway, yeah, that was ravens. The next cave here is known as the reindeer cave. Apparently the reindeer used to graze all over here. Can you imagine? Beautiful reindeer. I don't think I prefer them to the stupid deer we got already. So, aye. This here is the reindeer cave. I was considering to stay in this tonight because it is a bit drier. But I went for dun dun dun. I went for a cave with the best view. Why not, huh? This here is supposed to be Badger Cave, but I read somewhere else that you could call it Bear Cave. I think the polar bear was maybe found in here. This is my house for tonight. Check out the views. You cannot beat that view for a night. So. All right, guys. Well, while we wait on the fire to kind of cool down so that I can put my fish on, I got we brew. Who here knows what that is? You see, this is Shaga. The world famous Shaga. I am by no way, shape, or form a fungal expert, but. Fuck, I usually use my axe for this. But I know that you can brew up a bit of shaga. It's found on like trees, I think. Mainly, mainly birch trees, I think. Let's chop them up. Nice and beautiful golden orangey color inside. It is super good for you, I don't know. I don't exactly know what it does, but I know it's good for you. And it's delicious, it tastes like coffee, mate. It doesn't taste much different from coffee. And I've heard that from other people. My pal Jackie boy, man, I actually even watched this. He's my, he's my, he's my fungal mushroom mentor. We all got to learn, we all got to start somewhere, right? So I a couple of chunks. Leave them in the water to brew it up a bit. Oh, dropped a bit. And it'll be tasty as taste it can be. Mmm. Yeah. So that, my friends, is Shaga. Cool, eh? And tonight, for dinner, we've got some fantastic Scottish mackerel somewhere. We're going to leave the fire to cool down a wee bit before we think about putting that anywhere near it, though. I don't know. Feels a bit strange doing a doing a camping video. It's not really 
something I've done before. I don't want to talk to you. I'm just going to enjoy, enjoy my life. You want to watch the clouds going over? It's pretty cool. The first seven of macro ready. And three more of them where they came from. Nice and tasty. Oh well guys, it's a bit dark now. Don't really think you can see much. Got my macro and a wee cup of cup of shaga, some macro, can he beat it? Tasty, tasty stuff. I just completely slipped. Waiting on the fire to kick off again. Oh, delicious. Absolutely delicious. So guys, I do apologise, some kind of bad news. I was hoping to have a really, like, a good fire going, but I used most of the wood that I'd kind of foraged and I used it to cook, which is kind of the essential thing when you're out here. So, I, I was hoping to get the fire a bit bigger and maybe it would light up the cave, but this gives me a reason to come back here another time, eh? Maybe come with a buddy who knows the area really well. Um, aye, it's absolutely bliss, eh? You know all the stories of the bones and... It's, it's super fascinating, it's really cool. But... For me... I think about my ancestors when I'm somewhere like this. Hang on. You go, you see me again? <laughs> um, I think about my ancestors when I'm somewhere like this. I can imagine them up here, maybe on hunting trips, you know. You could live here, I'm sure people lived here probably thousands of years ago. I don't see why not. You've got the sea, you've got some locks. I mean, the sea's a bit of a mission, but it's not that far. This would have been a, a big river once upon a time as well. So I, eating some mackerel and drinking shaga in the ancient caves. Nice, huh? Good morning, guys. Ooh, it's like a baby, man. Ooh. Oh, yeah. The 
this was the, the bed for the night, everybody. Let's see if we've got any, any wood over there at all. To get fucking... Hmm. Don't know if I can have fucking hot water with that, like. Let's have a wee look and see, yeah. Basically, didn't bring a axe, and I've not got enough wood with me, so I am just chibbing fuck out of this thing, pulling wee bits off. Cause he was too wet anyway. He didn't really get get burnt last night, so we're just sticking the blade in him. And this should at least get me a hot brew. Which for me is essential in the morning. Otherwise I might start on some wee Englishman. <laughs> well, it's breakfast guys. Ooh. We we shagga in the morning. Some shortbread, can you beat it? We didn't get the we didn't get the storm last night. We just we were just pretty much drizzling all day. It's a wee bit Greek this morning. It's fucking it's nice, eh? So peaceful. Then guys, some of you might notice there's bugger all trees, no trees. And this beautiful, beautiful darling was what cooked my dinner last night. And I just want to show you how hard working this tree is. This is a rowan, some people call it a rowan, whatever. And he's been knocked over in hard gusts and wind that's come down the glen. And he survived. Anyone can try and identify these trees because they usually have like red berries, big clusters of red berries on them. See these berries? They've been knocked off because of the rain. But this tree, it's one of the, one of the biggest rowan trees I've actually seen. Really common to see the wee tiny ones. Look at this. It's all dead wood. And then it's like a whole new trunk growing inside the trunk. The issue I'm having is that round trees grow really easy in the highlands. Super easy. You see them just kind of oh, growing natural seeding everywhere. Um, but this is a lonely tree. He hasn't seeded any wee buddies. Probably, not saying for sure, but probably it's got a lot to do with the deer, man. It's the deer just come and munch all the baby trees like they can't fucking resist it. Which is why we should all be, all be gracefully popping the deer in the hind, you know what I mean? <laughs> this is like a delicious mushroom. And you see this like the tiny little bit of treed area that we have. Now, Imagine if that whole glen was covered in trees, just how many edibles there would be. I think it would be out of control. Do you all remember this wee waterfall for yesterday? That's how much it rained, man. Whee! It's fucking pummeling down now. Oh well, I'm away to get the bike, so... Cheerio!